and they even arranged a mattress for him. Now, isn't that nice? And uh, Van Dongen even took over uh, Picasso's ex-girlfriend as his favorite model. I owe everything to Jonkind, was signed Claude Monet. Now after the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, there was another institution that was crucial for the artists. The Salon de Beaux-Arts. And the Salon de Beaux-Arts was an annual exhibition for new artists. And this Salon, if you were admitted or refused, this could make or break your career. From around 1830, a young generation of artists started to shake up the artistic landscape in Paris. They began to see the Saloon as a conservative institution, only favoring traditional styles of art. These artists began to experiment and they eventually broke away from the Ecole and Salon de Beaux-Arts. The invention of the paint tube and the construction of the railway network made it easier for artists to paint outdoors. These artists were drawn to the beauty of the forest of Fontainebleau, which is located just outside of Paris. The village of Barbizon became a popular destination for those plein air painters. The so-called School of Barbizon was born. Johan Bartolt Jonkind first came to Paris in 18. 43. After studying in The Hague and in Amsterdam, he was immediately drawn to the city's vibrant artistic scene. Jonkind's early work in Paris was influenced by the Barbizon school. In contrast with the Barbizon painters, Jonkind experimented with more urban subjects, such as cityscapes and harbour scenes. He was particularly interested in capturing the effect of the sunlight on water. Jonkind's stay in Paris was a watershed moment in his career. In return, his work influenced a number of younger artists like Sisley, Gustave Gobert, and Signac. So Jonkind came to Paris uh, on a scholarship. When he'd spent all that money on booze and women, he left the town heavily in debt. He had to come back to the Netherlands, but he had made quite some friends in Paris. Friends that eventually would organize an auction to raise enough funds to not only get Jonkin back to Paris, also to pay off his debt. And they even arranged a maitresse for him. Now, isn't that nice? He would become the most important mentor of the 22 years old Claude Monet. Young kid came to be seen as one of the most important precursors to the Impressionist. Claude Monet once said, I owe everything to Young Kid.
Kees van Dongen was another Dutch uh, artist who was drawn to Paris. Van Dongen was born in Rotterdam in 1877. He began his uh, career as a cartoonist and illustrator from mainly uh, anarchist magazines. Around 1905, when Van Gogh's uh, work um, really finally gained some traction, Kees van Donger shifted into painting. His color for canvases propelled him into the leading avant-garde as he painted in the bold new style, derogatively called avalvism or savage art. Van Donger was influenced by the work of Paul Gauguin and Cezanne, Picasso, Matisse, and Brock. He lived and worked here in Montmartre, where another uh, non-French painter uh, proposed him to share a studio uh, together at Le Boteau uh, Lavoie. His name? Pablo. Pablo Picasso. The two artists uh, exchanged artistic uh, ideas and uh, Van Dongen even took over uh, Picasso's ex-girlfriend as his favorite model. Le Boteau Lavoie was a famous artist colony in Montmartre and it was where the Valvist movement began. His paintings helped to define the style. Now this would have been the view of well, quite some important people yeah. in, uh, in time. People like uh, Ernest Hemingway, Emile Zola, Modigliani, Diego de Vera, uh, Brac, Karel Oppel, Corneille, uh, Gauguin, Guggenheim, and just to mention a couple of people that uh, have, um, have had this, um, this view as well. And now we are here. That's quite cool. Van Dongen's later studio in Montparnasse was a popular gathering place for artists, writers and musicians. It was known for its wild parties and its bohemian atmosphere. Van Donga was an anarchist and he did not like the hierarchy that was slipping into the Parisian art scene. He felt that Cubism was too much focused on leading figures. So unlike his fellow colleagues, he preferred to follow his own path. So until his death in 1968, Van Donga, he was a prolific artist and he produced a large body of work. His paintings are in the collections of the major museums around the world. Thank you.